we're doing something this week. I hope you guys like. I think it'll be interesting. What is it? The sixteen nineteen project. Have you heard of that? Oh my no. god! It sounds so fun. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting no. for a teacher to talk to me about the sixteen nineteen project. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the sixteen nineteen project. Well, um, I'm, we're actually going to go into it next class, but um, that is the year the first ship with slaves arrived in America was 1619. Uh, I don't remember they came on the Mayflower. They still had slaves, though. Um, well, they might have, but the first ship from Africa that oh, arrived okay. in America with slaves we believe is landed here in 1619. So last year was the 400th anniversary of that. And the New York Times has put together a big project. It won the Pulitzer Prize called the 1619 Project. So we're just going to, we're doing a couple of different things. But that is, you're going to get to look through that and pick an essay you want to read about, about the legacy of slavery in America. And then we're going to learn how to cite that. Are we going to be arguing in class today? No. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, this is declarations and arguments. And I was like, I can argue in class today. No, we will argue soon. But the Wi-Fi here is way too spotty for me to put you guys in groups and come up with an argument. So um, we're not at my home anymore. We're, I'm at school. Yay. We're so, in the last period so you can just sneak back home. It's true, right? I live right across the street, so maybe. Um, okay, well, let's go ahead and get started to my friends that are here. Hi, happy Monday, happy last class. Um, okay, so what we're going to talk about today is the Declaration of Independence and how to look at arguments and how they're structured. Um, but first, I wanted to check in and see how you guys are doing today, especially because I posted some grades. And for several of you guys, I sent some work back and said, Whew. I know. So this just isn't quite what I'm looking for, guys. I'm looking for a little bit more. So if that was you who I sent work back to, take heart. I am still going to take all of that work once you redo it um, or resubmit it or just add a little bit to it. And I'm not going to count it late. I'm not going to like punish you with grades. I want the work to be at this quality. And so we're just going to get it to that quality. Does that make sense? So, okay. Um, and you guys really communicate with me. If you think I'm giving you too much work, I'm going to need you to tell me that. I'm running this class at a pace I think is reasonable, but I'm also teaching on ramps, which is the dual enrollment college class and AP literature. And those classes move faster right? So I might get ahead of myself and think you guys are at a place where you're not. So feel free to communicate with me if you think I'm piling the work on or whatever, okay? All right. Okay, so let's, oh, I didn't ask. Anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay. Okay, declarations and arguments. I want to revisit the rhetorical triangle again. I know we've talked about this, um, but this is how arguments are built. So I want you to think about those three parts of the rhetorical triangle, the speaker, the audience, and the subject, and how all of those are equal. It's an equilateral triangle with equal angles and equal sides. And those three parts are equal to each other in importance. And in the middle, we have the purpose. So our thinking is, what does the speaker want the audience to do, to think, to believe about the subject? And that's where we'll find purpose. So as we look at the Declaration of Independence today, we're going to think about who wrote it, who was the audience, and what was the subject? And once we think about that, we'll have an idea of what the purpose of this document was. So in an argument, there's the purpose, there's a claim, something that the speaker or writer is arguing, 
There's support for that claim, which could be evidence, it could be quotations, it's a lot of stuff to support that claim. And then there's something called the counter argument, which is where you anticipate what the other side is going to say and you have a response for that. I know some of you are thinking that this isn't important, but because we're studying American literature and this is one of our founding documents, it is important. That was an example of a counter argument. Okay, so the purpose, why was this text written? What did the author hope to persuade the audience to do, think, or believe differently? That's kind of where I want you guys thinking. That's what we're going to be annotating for. And I just talked about claim, support, and counter argument. Okay, so as we're looking at the Declaration of Independence, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about what complaints the revolutionaries had against England. What were their grievances? What were they upset about? And do you think other people could have had those same complaints against America? And if so, have those issues been resolved? Okay, so it's not something to answer now. It's something to think about as we're reading the language of the Declaration of Independence. Okay, could other people have said that very thing about us? Americans about the writers of the declaration and if they could have those issues been resolved or are we still hypocrites okay we're having some issues with cami so we're going to start by doing the cami assignment together all right so in order to do that i want you guys to go into your google classroom and in just one minute i will have loaded up the cami assignment we need to do all the cameo assignments together. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. <laughs> I think, Larry, that's because you don't understand it, which is totally, I get that. So I want to make sure we've got it together. And then we can go back and do it. Cameo is going to just, you're going to love this. Am I? Okay. Am I really? Um, when you're in college and you desperately need something to annotate with, yeah, you are. I don't think this is making it a cami assignment. So hang on, let me do this again. Create cami assignment. I'm so sorry, my friends. Um, issue with cami. That's not, I don't want to hear that. I do not want to hear that we're having an issue with cami. Right, so after this one, can we do I the do. history of Virginia thing? We can. You're asking to annotate? Ugh. That would be great. <laughs> you know, I have no idea how to do it. I'm like, I've been sitting here for 20 minutes. It's, it's just it's just all too much. I'm kidding. Uh-huh. Well, then that's why we're going to do this. We're going to make sure that we are all on the same page. Like the one that says translate his joke, like. I don't even know what that means. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like... okay. I, it's a joke from the 1600s. So, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. I don't, like, I, I've been sitting here for so long. I don't even, I do not see a joke. Okay. Well, I promise we'll do that after we get started with this. Okay. So just trust me. Today's the, okay. So this will be due then. This will be due then and then. Okay, so now I can, why isn't it letting me assign it to you guys? For English 3, there we go. Now it's gonna let me assign it. Okay, dears. All right, so what do you mean try again? Yeah, it's been doing that you better stop it, Cammie. We're doing this assignment. No, no we're yes. not. <laughs> Have you guys like done voodoo to my computer? What have you done? What? No. I, mean, I got some friends from New Orleans. <laughs> no, we're doing this. Why are the fates conspiring against me? I did nothing. Uh huh. It's just it's a sign. It's no. A sign. Yeah, it's telling us we're using too much cami at once. No, but it's because we're using cami. Period. <laughs> 
Cami is so good for us, though. It's so easy. I say yes. that as it's not working. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Th think. Think about it. It's cause so, and effect. This I, isn't working. So, so. No, no, cool. <laughs> okay. okay, I see. So the fates are saying no. Okay, well then let's do this because I want us to do that together. So we'll come back and we'll try that. Um, well, how do I want to do this? Um, okay. Okay, well, you're going to get the Declaration of Independence in some way, shape, or form. I'd really like it to be a camera assignment, but it might not be. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to read the declaration and you are looking for the claims and the supporting evidence. So I'm asking you guys to um, look specifically for what claims the declaration is making and what supporting evidence is out there. OK. Hey, Miss, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For those progress reports, are they like are they being sent to our house or is that like how's no. that? No, I okay. well. Okay, so they are they digital? Um, they should be digital. I let me just say this: it's my first day at Southwest at Northside. Everything was digital. Nothing was sent out on paper, and I think that that is district wide. Can you block somebody's email? Okay, thank God. I was checking. Here's here's just a free little bit of advice in case you are worried that your parents are going to be furious about your grade. They can email me and I will say I'm in the process of grading, right? Here's all the stuff that Elizabeth has turned in. And I'll let them know kind of where you stand. So I know some of you guys have resubmitted. I just happen to have 140 students that I'm grading all the resubmissions on. So it just, it takes me just a little bit, okay? Um, so if if you're concerned though, and you know you've turned in the work, have your parents email me and I can put their mind at ease, okay? Thank it's you. fine, as long as it's digital. It's, I mean, Thank that you. is, I will. I 78 in your class, but one of them is only because you had me resubmit it and the other one's because you graded it and then had me resubmit it again. So. I'm scared. You're complaining <laughs> about a 78. I have a 42. Well, you know, Larry, I would just, I, I'm not trying to punish you guys with grades, but if I ask you a question, I want you to take it seriously and answer it. So <laughs> I'm not calling out any names. Let me just say that I did have a student when I asked what they could tell me about the author did respond. He's an author. And I was looking for just a little bit more than that. So I am that was just, probably me. It might have been Larry. So I just want just a little bit more information. I promise not to ask you a bunch of questions that I think are are wasting time or questions to ask questions. If I'm asking you a question, it's because I think it's gonna help you or get your thinking in the right place. I, I don't I don't want to grade a bunch of questions that don't matter, you know. Um, that's way more work for me. So if I'm asking it, I want you to 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 give it a decent shot at an answer. Yeah, Miss Susan, 100 percent me. I remember the exact question too. <laughs> well, I remember all the questions I got wrong. Okay, and and do keep in mind, I'll let you keep redoing it until you get it to where we're both happy with it. Okay, so I'm not gonna not accept the work. The goal is for you to learn, not to make an A the first time, unless. We might have different goals. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to try this one more time and then I have plan B. Okay. So if you guys will just stick with me, um, that is not what I want. I want to delete this. Okay. And what I want is to go to. Um, I appreciate you guys being patient with me. That matters. And if not, then I miss. We won our game. You did. Who did you play? Uh, we played Saginaw, and they suck. We blew them out thirty-six zero. What? That's awesome. That is really great. 
I was hoping to come, but I did not. Um, but I will definitely be at your games. The next game is in Hearst against LD Bell. I have it in my calendar. I wrote them all down. It's at Pennington Field. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. So, plan B is this. Is Cami app. And I should have just copied this over this morning when I had it up. Of course, technology is not my friend. OK, but I hate wasting time. So while I'm waiting for all of that to pull up, let's go ahead and look at Jamestown at the General History of Virginia and see if we can't answer some of those questions. OK, so this is for Alden and everybody else. Why is no website working? That's perfectly fine. That is perfectly OK. Do not tell me that this is a sign. Yes, I mean, yes, yes, it is, ma'am. It yeah. is perfectly OK. And we're just going to shove everything back a day if we need to. Um, but OK, so let's talk about Jamestown and John Smith and why I wanted you guys to read this. OK. Um, who is John Smith? Is he like the um, first president? Um, he, he was before the president. <laughs> he, um, he was this adventurer. If you can see what's up on my screen right now, he was this like adventurer. Our country declared independence in 1776 and he was long dead by then. He lived from 1580 to 1631. Um, but he was this adventurer. If you've ever seen the movie Pocahontas, he was the blonde guy, you know, kind of the hero. Um, yeah, she didn't use him in the end. And right, so he, he was 16, out seeing the world um, and he was hired by, um, I think the Jamestown company to come or the Virginia company to come to America and start this colony. And so he came and he wrote about his experiences and he called it the general history of Virginia. And um, in the general history of Virginia, it's just his account of what happened. So it's a little biased, okay? As we're reading the story or his account, we're gonna see some questions to the side. They're blue squares or they are going to be red circles. And every time you see one of these, I want you to stop and answer the question or do what it's thinking using Cami. So you guys, I believe, can see my Cami assignment. Let's do this together. Wait, wait, miss, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Can you, can you say that one more time? I'm um, like to summarize it, I'm sorry. Yes, as we look at this text, you'll notice that there are questions in blue squares or red circles. And that's where I'm gonna stop and do my thinking, my annotating and answering the questions. Okay. The reason why we're looking at this piece is because John Smith wrote it and John Smith is telling his own story. And so let's see if we get a good sense of who John Smith is from reading this, okay? So here we go, the struggle for Jamestown. Now, keep in mind, John Smith lived in the 1500s. We don't talk like people did in the 1500s at all anymore, right? Y'all don't even talk the way I talked 20 years ago when I was your age or 30 years ago, however long ago, right? Um, so language changes. So if this feels difficult, it's because we're about, you know, four or 500 years, well, 400 years away from when this was written, okay? So of course it's gonna feel a little odd. Being thus left to our fortunes, it fortuned that within 10 days, scarce 10 among us could either go well or stand. Such extreme weakness and sickness oppressed us. And 
Threat, none need marvel if they consider the cause and reason which was this. While the ship stayed, our allowance was somewhat bettered by a daily proportion of the biscuit, which sailors would pilfer to sell or give or exchange with us for money, sassafras, furs, or love. But when they departed, there remained neither tavern, beer house, nor place of relief, but the common kettle. Had we been as free from all sins as we were from gluttony and drunkenness, we might have been canonized for saints. But our president, Edward Wingfield, would never have been admitted for engrossing to his private oatmeal, sack, oil, aquavitae, beef, eggs, or what not but the kettle. That indeed he allowed equally to be distributed, and that was half a pint of wheat and as much barley boiled with water for a man a day. And this, having fried some 26 weeks in the ship's hold, contained as many worms as grain, so that we might truly call it rather so much bran than corn. Our drink was water and our lodging castles in the air. Okay, so this is what Alden was asking me about. Using the side notes, restate lines 8 through 12 in modern English. What joke is Smith making? So if I come up here and I look, I see that this is 8 through 12. So I'm going to get my markup tool and I'm going to highlight it. Okay. I'm also going to highlight this. Uh, okay. And I'm maybe going to unhide this. Okay. So what is this text saying? Well, I get from the first line that they were sick. And they were sick because they were hungry. While the ships were there, their allowance was better. Okay. So I'm going to highlight that. And I'm actually going to make a comment by selecting the comment box, I'll put it right here, and now I can make a comment out to the side that says, while the ships stayed, they were able to get more food, right? And if you look at how they were able to get more food, they were able to buy it, give it, exchange it for money, sassafras, furs, or love. So I think you can imagine all the different ways that you could have acquired some food. Yes? Good? No? Not good? Yes, good? Okay. All right. When are your office hours? <laughs> My office hours are 8.30 to 9.30 every morning and then 2.45 to 3.45 in the afternoons. Will you be having them today? I will be there today. Okay. Is it okay. the same code? Like, is it still? No, it's in the announcement stream. Okay, I'll look at that in a minute. Okay. So, Alden, I was doing this for you, so I hope you are still with me. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, so, okay. I will just say, when they departed, there remained neither tavern, beer house, nor place of relief, but common kettle. So the they is the ships. When the ships left, there was no place to get more food. All they had was what they could eat. So had we been free from all sins as we were from gluttony and drunkenness, do you know what gluttony is? Uh... I don't know. Okay, so let's look that up. Glutes? Um, well, no. Close. I mean, Oops. it seems like it. Gluttony is, there you go. I'll share this tab. So when I look it up in the dictionary, it's greed or excess in eating. It's overeating. Uh. Okay. So if we had been as free from all sins as we were from the sin of overeating and drunkenness, we would have been saints. Why were they free from overeating and drunkenness? It wasn't because they chose to be. Go ahead, Jade. It, what it, doesn't it have to do with famine and like they, it was very sparse to get food? They had no food, right? And it was and really hard to make beer 
or any form of alcohol. Exactly. And when the ships were in port, they could get food and alcohol from the ships. When the ships left, there was no extra food or alcohol. There was nothing. So he is joking that if we had been free from all of the sins, as we were from overeating and over drinking, then we would have been saints. It's a 1600s joke, but that's the joke he's making. Does that make sense, Alden? Ah, that was so funny. Uh huh. Well, I mean, so so, they couldn't eat or overeat or drink because they had no food. Okay, there you go. So that's his kind of thing. All right, so then I would keep. Uh huh. Can you can you go can you go to the right? So you can see what I just wrote. Yeah. Okay, and this is what I'm looking for in your annotation. So I'm actually glad you're having me stop. I am looking for some highlighting and a comment box that explains your highlighting. I'm looking for both of those things. And Larry, this is why you will thank me when you're in college. Yes, ma'am. I know it probably doesn't seem like it, but in college, you're going to need a way to do all of this electronically. And Cammy will get you there. And Cammy, free. Photography. Huh? What if I'm going to college for photography? If you have to do any reading of any professional articles at all, this will help you. But you can edit your pictures with it. Look at the on the left. If I I bet even in photography, you're gonna have to do some research on photographers and their methods and how things have changed over the years. History. I, th that is my guess. Um, and so this will come in useful for that. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look at the next page. So then with this lodging and diet, our extreme toil, bearing and planting palisades, so strained and bruised us in our continual labor in the extremity of the heat and so weakened us as we, as were cause sufficient to have made us as miserable in our native country as any place else in the world. I am not going to read this whole thing and summarize it, but I get a general sense from that paragraph that they had to work hard and it was miserable. And that's really all I need to know. From May to September, those that escaped lived upon sturgeon and sea crabs, 50 in this time we buried, the rest seeing the president's projects to escape these miseries in our penance by flight, who at this time had neither felt nor felt want nor sickness. So moved our dead spirits as we deposed him and established Radcliffe in his place. Gosnold being dead, Kendall deposed. Smith newly recovered. Martin and Radcliffe were by his care preserved and relieved, and the most of the soldiers recovered with the skillful diligence of Master Thomas Watton, our Surgeon General. Now we did talk about this paragraph a little bit in class. Let's look at what B says. Reread lines 27 through 28. Clarify the pronoun referent for the word his in line 27. Who is responsible for healing Martin and Radcliffe? So I'm going to. Well, I don't know why this is doing this. Here's what I here is what I want. I want the markup. So this is line 27. Can anybody tell me why my computer is hating me right now? Because you're using the school's awful internet. Thank you, Jade. Wait, yes, I feel much better. I am. Oh, why? Uh, all teachers have to be at school. We are teaching from here now. Yay. Okay, so if you look at what I just highlighted, you'll see Smith newly recovered. Martin and Radcliffe were by his care preserved and relieved. And what this question is asking me is, who is his, right? 
So Martin and Radcliffe were by whose care preserved? Well, that pronoun comes all the way back to Smith. Are you with me? So in my text box off to the side, I would say Smith cared or healed. Okay, you guys with me? Yes? Yes. Dave's with me, Alden's with me. Okay, Larry's with me. Anthony, Yvette, Angel, Isaac, Isaac. Okay. All right, so why does this matter? Why do we care? Well, because Smith is the guy that wrote this. And so look at how Smith looks here. Smith recovered from the sickness and then saved the other people in Jamestown, right? Smith is making himself look really good. And Smith doesn't say, I saved them. Smith uses third person. He saved them. Smith was recovered and Smith saved them. Well, why does Smith do that? Why would you talk about yourself in third person? Alden, do you have a thought? No. Okay. Go ahead, Jade. Um, he talks about himself in third person uh, to relay the fact that it's not just it makes him sound less inclusive towards it. Mm -hmm. Also, the story was made for the perspective of he didn't write it. It's the story of Jamestown, not Jamestown. Yeah. So it makes yeah. him seem like he was just some person with a heroic act, not so much as, oh, and by the way, I did this thing. It, it was more going towards the type of... Exactly. Story to not come off prideful. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's bragging. It looks like a history book. This is fact. This is what happened, right? Um, let's read down just a little bit more. But now all our provisions spent, the sturgeon gone, all helps abandoned, each hour expecting the fury of the savages. When God, the patron of all good endeavors in that desperate extremity, so changed the hearts of the savages that they brought such plenty of their fruits and provision as no man wanted. So now we have the Native Americans bringing food to Jamestown. Can you go right a little bit? Yes. Okay. That's my answer to question B. The new president, Radcliffe and Martin, being little beloved of weak judgment and dangers and less industry and peace, committed the managing of all things abroad to Captain Smith who by his own example, good words and fair promises, set some to mow, others to bind thatch, some to build houses, others to thatch, himself was always bearing the greatest task for his own share, so that in that short time he provided most of them lodgings, neglecting any for himself. So do Smith's claims sound more or less credible than they would have if stated by a first person narrator? Well, let's look at the claims, okay? Captain Smith, who by his own example, good words, fair promises, okay, what did he do? He got some to mow, others to bind thatch, some to build houses, others to thatch him, himself always bearing the greatest task for his own share. He provided most of them lodgings, neglecting any for himself. So according to this history, it was John Smith who built the community. He is the one who told people what to do. He always did the most work and he provided houses for everybody, but not for himself. He looks like a hero, doesn't he? Yeah. But who wrote this account? Who is the author? Of course he looks like a hero, he's writing it. But it doesn't come off as arrogant because he's not saying, and I got these people to do this, and I built this house, and I, I, I. That's not what he's doing at all. He's writing it like a history book, so it seems credible. And so that's what I would write to the side. 
right where it says, do his claims sound more or less credible? And so I would say, if I can get my text box, I would say, his claims seem credible because he, if he wrote in first person, it would seem like he is bragging. Okay. So here, Alden, so you can see that. Okay. So let me say a word about this. I am, of course, looking for you guys to understand what's going on, but I'm not like it has to be exactly what Miss Ritchie wrote or got out of the text what you guys get out of the text might be just as valid. What I'm looking for is highlighting and annotation and those comments that tell me what you're getting out of the text. So if we're getting something different and I think you're off base, we can have a conversation. But maybe you're seeing something in the text I didn't see. That's just as valid. It'd be really good for me to see that. So I'm looking for your thoughts, your thinking. That's what Cami is doing. That's what these answers are doing. I'm not worried about the one right answer. There isn't one right answer. There's my right answer. There's your right answer. And I want to know what you're thinking. Does that make sense? So I don't want you to put a bunch of pressure on yourself. I have to find the right answer. Most of the time, there isn't just one right answer. I want to know what your right answer is. OK, so this is what we were going to do with the Declaration of Independence. But at this point, we have 20 minutes of class left. I have a bunch of missing work from you guys. And I still haven't gotten Cami to do what I want. So we're going to consider this grade improvement day. All right. And that's where you guys get to look at your grades and improve them. 